Hi, everyone. Um, I hope you're enjoying Code Emotion. Uh, personally, I really loved the previous talk from Richard. Great stuff. And so today, I want to introduce you um, an open source project called Clocker.io, the Docker Cloud Maker. Um, so first things first, um, I'm Andrea Turli. I'm an ex-student of this uh, university. Um, currently, I'm a software engineer and an open source passionate. And in fact, I'm uh, uh, a contributor and um, a committer to Apache Software, a couple of Apache Software Foundation projects. And those are some references for me. I'm, uh, my <coughs> Twitter, Twitter and handle uh, is to Linux, and this is my GitHub space if you want to look at my projects. Um, I'm working for a company called Cloudsoft. It's a startup uh, based in Edinburgh, <laughs> Scotland, UK, but we have four uh, highly distributed um, highly distributed um, team, so we, are, we have guys in Italy, in US, and in Bulgaria. So um, as we are hiring at the moment, if you find interest, interest in the topic that I'm discussing today, please come talk to me after the talk. So a little bit about the agenda. Uh, I will introduce you um, uh, the project, the Crocker project. Um, I will describe what's the idea of the Docker Cloud in, in our opinion. Uh, I will give you a brief demonstration, which, of course, will only scratch the surface of, of all the, the features that uh, Clocker offered, but it will probably give you a good understanding of, of what the, pro uh, the, the, the project is. It. And, and finally, if I have time, I would like to, to discuss a little bit uh, in a deep dive the advanced feature offered by Clocker. So, um, those are some references uh, for the project. It's an open source project, Java-based. Um, it's an Apache 2.0 licensed. Um, this, this is the URL if you want to check out, this, that the Twitter handle if you want to, um, to follow us. Um, the project was started by myself and a, a colleague of mine uh, called Andrew Kennedy. Uh, it's a recent project, it's just uh, 10 months uh, but notwithstanding that, uh, we, we have already a good number, so th those are the numbers on GitHub, 37 forks, 10 contributors. It, it's something growing, and because it, it's, of course, attracting uh, growing interest. Um, so those are the references. At the moment, the, this is the, the, the latest stable release that I will use today. Oh, sorry, it's not stable, it's the devel developer preview. Um, we will have a final um, release soon, and we are working on the 09 uh, for, the, for the next features. So, but what, what does it do exactly, Clocker? So, primarily, it, it does three things. It spin up, it spin up um, and manages Docker clouds, and I will briefly introduce uh, the concept of Docker clouds later on in this talk. Uh, it, serves, it serves up containers on demand in order to be able to deploy composite application um, onto Docker, uh, in particular, cluster of Docker engines. So um, and, and this is, I think, the, 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 the strong point um, of the Clocker solution. It's a multi-host, a multi-container application that offers you a seamless networking, so you don't, you don't need to care about the, the port forwarding problems or all the kind of stuff that are introducing where, where you're using Docker. And it orchestrates a, a cluster of composite applications, so give, giving you a, control, um, a, a controlled and managed environment. So even if it is a young project, um, it's already quite adopted in, uh, from a couple of financial services and insurance. Um, th those are uh, at the level of proof of concept stage. But th there's, all, there's already a, a company called Push Technology that is using in production particularly to provision a uh, trial application and trial version of their application for their customer that want to uh, just have the feeling of their application. And, uh, and using containers and disposable environment, it's, it's, a good, um, it's a good solution for them. So the, probably the best way to explain what's Clocker is starting from the description of the, the, the stack technology that composed the, the, application, uh, the, the solution. So, uh, primarily, there are four main technologies that, are, that compose the Clocker solution. Uh, at the core of, of this solution, there's Apache Brooklyn, which is um, 
which, which I, will, I will explain later, that is leveraging another Apache uh, project called JClouds. Um, and together they interact with a cluster of Docker engine uh, deployed in whatever environment is supported by JClouds. And, and, those, and those Docker engine are interconnected using a, a, a software-defined networking solution. So let me try to explain uh, briefly the, the four main technologies that compose the stack. So Apache Brooklyn um, is another open source project uh, started at uh, CloudSoft by our CTO and VP of engineering and recently donated to Apache Software Foundation. It's still an incubator project, but we are in the progress or in the process of making, them, uh, making it a, 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 a top level project. Um, what's uh, basically um, does Brooklyn it's so Brooklyn is an application management platform. Uh, it allows you to deploy, manage, and monitor your application, which are described <coughs> um, using blueprints. And I will, I will talk briefly about the, the concept of br uh, blueprints later. Um, the, the design of the Apache Brooklyn is around uh, the autonomic management um, 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 technology, uh, sorry, the, 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 the autonomic management um, of software systems. So um, if you're familiar with, with this control loop approach for self-adaptive system, this is the, the kind of things that you, you, you usually see in an autom autonomic system where there is an autonomic manager that is described with this uh, common monitor, analyze, plan, execute uh, state, which offers sensors and, and expose effectors so that um, using the values coming from the, the sensors, you can trigger some, some effectors to modify the status of the, of the autonomic manager. Uh, some of the main concepts for Brooklyn are, of course, the blueprint, as I said before, uh, the blueprint captures the application initial topology plus the policies that governs this topology at runtime. So a topology is basically um, a group of entities which are software components that are organized uh, uh, hierarchy or hierarchically or, or uh, as, a, as a cluster. And as I said, the, the policy governs the application behavior, so we can have cluster management policy resilience and failover policy follow the sun, but it's quite easy to define new policies, so, so it's quite easy to, to, to add m other functionalities to, to, to Brooklyn itself. And then there's the, the location. The location is the target environment for the, the Blueprint deployment. And so this is the basic schema. Uh, you have in green the service Blueprint, um, which um, um, together with the, the location will make will turn the, 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 the blueprint into a deployed application. So on the left-hand side, you can see a blueprint. In this case, a simple YAML file, which follows a, um, a standard called Oasis Camp uh, specification. And, and by passing that to, to Brooklyn, you will have the deployment of, the, of, of your own application. Um, of course, um, because it's we are separating the blueprints from the location. Um, we, we as, as, as Brooklyn community, we, we think that we, we, we can um, enable application portability in this way. And, um, and, and Brooklyn relies a lot on JCloud's um, project to, to be able to target different environments, different cloud environments. So let me introduce you briefly to JCloud's. I'm a JCloud's committer. Um, this is the the project started by Adrian Cole in 2009, donated to Apache Software Foundation in 2012. Um, the latest, the latest uh, stable release is that one, but we, we are working on the new one, so if you're interested, please stay tuned. Um, what's JClouds in, in a nutshell? It's an open source multi-cloud toolkit for the Java platform. So it, it helps existing tools written in in any JVM language uh, that, you, that, you, that you are using to target different cloud providers. Those are some logos from the, the main uh, cloud technology that JCloud supports. Um, you can recognize Amazon Web Services, um, HP Cloud, um, DigitalOcean, Google Compute Engine. We are working on um, Microsoft Azure, 
and we will probably add that uh, on the next release. <coughs> So the entire Java library, uh, which the entire JCloud library, is organized around three main uh, abstractions. The compute and the blob store and the load balancer abstraction. So because a cloud provider, uh, an infrastructure as a service cloud provider, uh, generally offers those kind of features, um, the, the, the JCloud library abstracts away those concepts using this, the, um, this abstraction, of course. Um, the most mature abstraction in JCloud is the compute abstraction. This is a, a, a working example um, that will allow you to create a simple Java virtual machine, oh sorry, a, a, a virtual machine on soft layer <coughs> using those few lines of Java. Um, basically, the, the first part is creating the compute service context and where you specify the name of the cloud provider that you want to use over there, uh, the credential, of course, and a, a bunch of um, uh, juice module to configure the, the, the context. Uh, and then you specify the kind of template of the machine that you want to run. Uh, in this particular case, it's an Ubuntu 14, 64 bit uh, with 2, giga two gigabyte RAM on the location, which is the data center offered by SoftLayer, which is in Amsterdam in that case. And then calling this, this abstract uh, method here, the create nodes uh, in group, which is supported by e every provider in, in JClouds. Um, you will have a virtual machine that then you can SSH into it, run some commands and print out the, the, the result, and after that destroy the node. In, in, in these few lines, you can see the, the, um, the, the strong point of, of JCloud, I think, because if you have a, a Java application and you want to target and you want to a, a cloud provider and you want to avoid vendor lock-in, by simply switch the, uh, change the name over there. Instead of soft layer, you can specify Google Compute Engine or Amazon, Amazon EC2 um, and passing the, the right credential, you will have the exact same code working on a different cloud provider. <coughs> uh, we are doing our best as a community to, to, to test it out uh, at, at, at least at each release. Uh, so there's not only unit tests, but also live tests. And from, from community partners, but also from partners that are working for the cloud provider itself. In fact, Google is, is, is working to help, is, is helping us in, in creating the right JCloud uh, configuration for, for their cloud. Um, because I am a long term contributor to JCloud, it, it, it felt natural to me to, to try to integrate with Docker. So even if Docker is not exactly a, a cloud provider, of course, um, it kind it kind of be something similar if you, if you are targeting, for example, your own laptop. Because you know, on your laptop, you can spin up um, uh, probably um, uh, a dozen of virtual machines, but, but you, can, you can spin up uh, hundreds of containers. So it, it seems to me interesting also because um, Docker is exposing a REST API to integrate uh, J uh, JClouds and Docker. And I finalized this, this implementation in during the last release. And this is the, a, a very similar code to the, the previous one. And just specifying Docker instead of a uh, soft layer, you can, you can spin up a container in this case, which is always a node for JClouds, and, and SSH into it and, and, and do whatever you want. This, of course, was the initial step for, for, for Clocker because it, it, it's an enabler for, for, for us. But so the, the last part of the, the introduction of the tools is, is about Docker. I, I mentioned already a couple of times this project. It's an incredibly popular project at the moment. Uh, it's only two years old, I think, uh, but it, it, there's a huge number of contributors and, uh, and uh, a huge number of ecosystem of, 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 of of tools that are that are leveraging in in some way Docker. So, but in, in brief, you you're probably familiar with this concept. So I, I will I will go very quick. Uh, but but a, a containers is something that was around for for ages probably. Uh, so Docker that didn't didn't reinvent anything in particular. It just simplified the use of containers, and and this this create this this is a game changer because. <coughs> Sorry, um, because because now I each developer can test out uh, its own application in in matter of seconds because you can spin up uh, a container in matter of seconds rather than wait for a virtual machine that can bootstrap in in minutes and 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 also you can 
easily pass across your team um, the, the Docker image of your application uh, because it's, it's only a few megabytes instead of having a huge uh, virtual machine snapshot that can be, I don't know, 100, 100 or gigabyte. Um, unfortunately, even if Docker is, solves a lot of problems, it introduced a little bit more, uh, uh, some, some, some other problem, at, at especially at the networking level. Um, because, because natively, um, Docker was meant to be used in a single do uh, Docker host. Um, so each container runs isolated. Um, there's a bridge network uh, provided by Docker where each container is, is, is bridged. Um, but you have to do some, some, some extra step to expose the ports of the service running in the, con in the container, and you have to, to explicitly map uh, to the external interface, which is your host, uh, the internal port uh, of the container. So this, this clarifies probably what, what I'm trying to say here. Um, this is the port of the where, where your service thinks that is running, but this is mapped uh, to the outside world in, in, in using, using this particular port for the uh, uh, mechanism. And there's no easy way that container C in a, doc in, in a host 2 can, can communicate with the, the containers running on, on, the, the, on the host 1, where there's another Docker engine which is running a couple of containers. So the, the, the simple solution for this kind of problem is using <coughs> an overlay network. So using a software-defined networking, we, um, we think that we can enable an easier host-to-host -host communication without dealing too much about the board forwarding and having a natural um, application configuration. This was primarily um, uh, driven by some requirements coming from Erlang application, which are using some distributed protocol that is not particularly happy with, with port forwarding. So we, we need to have this kind of solution for at least for Erlang-based um, application. And React, um, uh, which is a, a, a basho NoSQL solution that I will use during the demo, it's based on Erlang, and it will probably um, show you that, that, that this solution is working. Uh, Clocker itself is using, at the moment, um, a couple of different SDN providers. One is called Weave. Uh, another one is, is already um, implemented for IBM Dove, and we, we will release a new one, a new implementation for Metaswitch Calico in the upcoming release. So in the spirit of having a battery-included solution but removable, we, um, we offer Clocker uh, built on Weave, which is a, a, a cool startup, um, which is providing uh, this kind of solution for SDN. It's, it's meant to be an easy-to-use solution, so it's run, it, it runs on user space, and it, it is itself a Docker container. So the, the, those red here are the agents of the, the Weave uh, solution that are deployed on different Docker hosts and allows, you the, and allows the communication across the host uh, with, 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 without, um, seamlessly for, for the user. Uh, okay, so now that now that we have the introduction to the components of Clocker, let me try to explain you with, um, with a demo what, how, what it looks like. Um, so Clocker is an orchestration tool for, for, for containers, uh, as I said. So starting from a description, which is a blueprint uh, of, of the, the Docker cloud, we will be uh, Clocker will be able to provision virtual machine on the cloud, uh, provided that it is targeting. As a, as a location, install the Docker engine inside that virtual machine, which is able to, to provision containers for, for the application later on. And, and of course, inter, um, and create the interconnection for the, the, the Docker host using a, an SDN solution. And so the, the Docker cloud is primarily two things. It's a blueprint from, from, from one point of view. And this means that you have uh, yet another application for, for, for Brookin to be deployed. But once the application is deployed on the, mm, the right-hand side, you can see that uh, this application becomes uh, a Brooklyn location, which can be used for subsequent uh, blueprints to be deployed on. And let me try to, to give you the demo. So I will hopefully uh, 
clarify. Mm, uh, it, it would be impossible with this microphone, but okay, I will try. Um, so for the purpose of this demo, uh, I, I've already, so this is the, the Brooklyn console, web console, um, where you can see the application manager at the moment by, by Brooklyn. And for the purpose of this demo, I have already deployed using a, a blueprint that I would like to show you, which is, okay, this one here. Um, as I said, it's based on an Oasis uh, specification called CAMP. Um, here uh, you can see that the, the main, the, the most important things, the, the location where I deployed the, uh, the, the application is SoftLayer Amsterdam 1, which is the name of the data center hosted by IBM um, SoftLayer. And, and then there's the description of the application, which, which consists of uh, a Docker infrastructure, where I specify the Docker version of the Docker engine that I want to use, the TLS certificate and key that I need to use to contact the, the REST API offered, ex exposed by the Docker engine. Um, and the, the initial size of the, uh, of, the Docker, um, of the Docker host here is two. So uh, it, it will provision basically two virtual machine and where, where it will install Docker engine. And those are the policies that I specified um, um, for the placement of the, the containers. Uh, th those, are, those are defined in, in Clocker, so you don't use to, uh, to define them, but, but you can use it, of course. This is max container placement, where you can have at, um, at most 12 uh, containers per, per host. And, and let me go a little bit fast here. Here, there's the specification of the SDN that I, that I want to use. So because, because Clocker is offering a pluggable system for SDN, this is the, the Weave network that we, we, we are going to use with the configuration that is needed um, uh, using, using this SCI DR, DR um, specification. Um, and so if we go back to, okay. You, you will probably recognize uh, the Docker infrastructure, which was the, the root element of the, of the application. The, the, a cluster of Docker hosts, in this case, there are two, as, a, as I specify on my YAML file, and, and the Weave network configured and wait for, uh, for requests to come, and, and the two agents that are deployed inside the, the two Docker hosts for Weave, okay? So the second part of the um, the demo would be to actually deploy uh, an application on top of those Docker Docker Cloud. So instead of having a proper cloud provider that is provision uh, provision virtual machine where we install um, um, the application as usual, we will use containers in this case. And so. If I, if I paste, uh, <laughs> fuck. Okay. So if I paste this YAML file. Uh, a ROM code motion chat, which is a simple application built uh, a three a, a three a three tier uh, application where we have a web cluster load balanced by H proxy uh, with a cluster of JBoss seven server, and the back end is a, a cluster of a React server. Um, this will au automatically provision for me all the containers that are needed on the Docker cloud. So, if we look at the Docker cloud at the moment, um, there are those containers that are being provisioned for me, and they're being attached to the uh, on-the-fly virtual network created for me, and there are three at the moment, a public and React and web subnet tier that, 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 I, that I want to use for my application. And, and so the, the front end is already deployed. <coughs> the React cluster is probably still deploying, um, but we, using this debug console, which is uh, offered by, by Brooklyn, we can, we can look at the status of the cluster, uh, the React cluster. Uh, 
So So my cluster is still deploying uh, the application. So the, the, the fact that it's spinning there, it, it means that the application is not ready to be used. But in a few minutes, or probably seconds, it will be, it will be OK. And uh, uh, and we can, of course, look at the React uh, web console to see if what uh, Clocker is saying is the same. Okay. So mean, meanwhile, I, I think I can I can try to describe the 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 the, the front end um, of, of the application. Whereas the uh, HA proxy um, is a load balancer for the the cluster of JBoss Seven server, and. This guy here is now coming through. Unfortunately, probably it's a problem uh, with the network. I don't know. Um. OK, so the application is running at the moment. I can contact it. It's a very basic chat application built on top of React. Uh, we should have the confirmation, yeah, that the cluster is working. And then, OK, I can, I can type some messages over here and just to see that the application is actually working. Um, and OK. And and imagine that at, at runtime, your application becomes extremely popular and you want to scale up the, the JBoss servant server because the load balancer is, 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 a, is having a lot, of, um, a lot of traffic. So using Clocker, you can easily scale up, I don't know, let's say f additionally, um, f we, we, we can addition four JBoss 7 server in matter of seconds um, it's at the moment is deploying the the jboss con the container is provisioned uh, the container with the the code for jboss is downloading the the war file is installing on it is attaching the container to the virtual network and and then attaching the the new jboss 7 server to the load balancer this means that uh, so everything is green and if we go back to the application we can see that the application is still running and we can say another message over here, and everything is fine. So it, it's quite interesting, not only for development purposes, but also at production level, because, because as you can see, you can, uh, as, we, as we have seen, you, you, you can scale up and down the, the cluster of managed by, by Clocker in a matter of seconds, which is something really interesting when you have a spike of load o on your application. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to, to rush. I, I, I had a, a lot of things to, to say uh, still. But um, what, what, the, what we have seen exactly is an orchestration of Docker containers uh, deployment, deployment over and integrated with an SDN solution called Weave. Um, there's an, an, an automatic application deployment over the containers provisioned by the, the multiple instances of Docker hosts. And, and, and this application is then managed, managed at, at runtime for us using Clocker plus Brooklyn. So there are a lot of advanced features that I would like to, to cover here, but probably we, we, we don't have time, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, will, I will, of course, circulate the, 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 um, the slides so you, you can read or you can reach out to us uh, using the uh, Twitter handle. Again, it's Clocker Central. So w what in, in short, we've seen that Clocker is a, is a stack made of Brooklyn J Clouds, Docker, and Weave in this case, but SDN pluggable solution, which solves composite application management, Docker cloud networking, and container pl placement and provisioning. Um, the same way you can do it in Brooklyn, you can do it also on containers using Clocker. So this is a little bit about, about the roadmap, but yeah, I think we have time for, for questions if you're 
curious or you have something that is not clear, I'll, I'll be happy to answer. You mean for development or for deployment? deployment. Yeah, y y you can configure whatever entity and whatever software you want. There's um, a good catalog uh, of, of, of uh, already supported software that I, I didn't have time to show you, but if you go to Brooklyn, you will find a lot of uh, supported technologies uh, from web application to um, NoSQL solution uh, and, and monitoring systems. So th there's a, a lot of, of stuff. And the way it works is um, basically it provision uh, the software on the virtual machine or the container using SSH and using bash scripts, basically. But if you are already familiar with Chef, Puppet, or Salt, or Ansible, you can integrate those, those technologies also. Um, and so I if you have already investment on the particular um, technologies, Brooklyn and Clocker doesn't force you to, to change your mindset. Uh, the only thing that is needed is to create that blueprint, uh, which is just the, the template of your application, which compose like a Lego, uh, your application, because m many times your application is based on open source solutions. So you basically compose the, the application, you run it in whatever uh, environment you like. I showed you that you can deploy on JCloud supported cloud, but also your laptop or a bare metal server can be targeted. So, so there's, there's really an abstraction over the infrastructure. We don't care too much about what, where you want to deploy, but we care about your application. So you, we are able to deploy it and to, to manage it at, at runtime, hopefully in the right way. Yeah. So I can uh, create a brand new. So those those are the mechanisms. If I if I got correctly your your question, those are the mechanism that you can use to specify the kind of Docker uh, image that you want to use. No, so no, I, I deploy the virtual machine. Uh, I've got, for example, five bare metal mm -hmm. hosts. I want to set up five Docker engines. Okay. Those Docker engines as a cluster. Yes. Uh, I can do it with uh, other solution. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it, Clocker. Uh, instead of provisioning on the fly the virtual machine, if you already have an an IP addressable uh, bare metal server, uh, you can specify the IP address of those bare metal server, and you can deploy Clocker on top of those servers without provisioning any new machine on on, on a cloud provider. So yes, I it's supported. No, uh, the Clocker itself is designed as a plug pluggable solution. So at the moment, we support Weave and IBM OpenDove. Um, we, we have implementation for MetaSwitch Calico, which is another one. Uh, we are planning to have uh, support for OpenV Switch and, um, and, and, and of course, uh, other SDN solution, because, because it, it's simply for us, it's simply a provider. So we have an interface that we can consume. And if the community has some requirements for any other SDN, we will be more than happy to, to integrate with. But at the moment, we have this one. So Socket Plane, for example, is another one, which was recently bought by, 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 um, oh sorry, bought by uh, Docker itself. And, and it will, will be probably available on the next Docker uh, release. So, so we, will, we will have support also for, for that. Okay, um, I think we are done. Thank you very much and enjoy your lunch. Thank you.